I spent most of my railway career in operations, particularly on the theme of safety. And that was particularly the focus after the Clapham Junction tragedy in 1988. As a result of that, I was asked to do consultancy work in a number of countries overseas. And coming back from Australia on one occasion, called off in the city of Bombay. Well, that's what it was called then, now Mumbai. And uh, I spent the night in a, a, a hotel, not much air conditioning, felt a bit hot, not too well. So I decided to go for a walk the following morning and I got lost. Eventually I came across a big railway station and it was the morning crush hour, as they call it there. Thousands of people everywhere. I stopped off, got my map out, was trying to find out where I was and out of the crowd comes this little girl. She can't have been more than about six, seven years of age, filthy dirty, and she was begging. And I had no loose change. People said, don't, don't give to the, 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 uh, uh, the beggars anyway, because you'll never stop. And so I waved her away. And to my horror, this little girl suddenly produced a whip from behind her back and started lashing herself across her shoulders. And I, I just stood there dumbstruck. And she did it again. And as I said, I was feeling fragile anyway, and I just couldn't cope with that. And I panicked, got into a shop doorway, pulled myself together, and I thought, I can't leave her like that. And I went back. No idea what I thought I was going to do about it, but she disappeared. Anyway, I went on my way, and I was haunted by that picture. You know, if I shut my eyes now, I can still see that little girl looking at me. When I got back to this country, I realised that she she wouldn't have done that sort of thing off her own bat. She was being exploited by some, some adult who was, who was telling her what to do. And she was not just the only one. I saw other children like that while I was in India. And so I started thinking, what can I do about it? And I, I got involved initially with the big human rights organisation, Amnesty International. Got involved with their Children's Rights Network. And a few months later found myself as their representative in a group of charities that were working for street children called the Consortium for Street Children. I was their rep. I went along to one of the first meetings and found they were discussing why children run away, how they get involved on the street, living there full time. And uh, I thought about this. And I, as a railway safety officer, I'd been used to doing risk assessments and so forth. So I did a little risk assessment on the back of an envelope. I did a uh, uh, causes and consequences. Uh, I drew, in fact, a little tree. The roots of my tree were the causes. You know, some children uh, come from families that are so desperately poor, they're sent out to work, even at a very young age. And then they get lost or picked up by gangs, exploited and so on. Other children are running away from abuse, sexual abuse or violence, domestic violence in the home. Other children just come from families that have collapsed because they're orphaned or perhaps because of conflict or, or disease and so on and find themselves up on the street. And then I looked at the branches of my tree, the, the consequences. You know, these children, they, I had to look what their needs are. They, they need food, they need water, they need friends, they need somewhere to sleep safely at night. And all the, to find all these things, these children have great difficulty. They become nuisances to, the, to, to, to other people uh, and they're abused. The police and others, they, they don't want them. They push them out of the way. And so I looked at the other members of the consortium there and I passed my little tree round and said, what's your intervention strategy? How do you try to help these people? And some of them, one or two of the bigger organisations, said, well, we don't actually work directly with the street children, but we do a lot of preventative work in, in the slum communities, you know, health and education and so on. Amnesty, of course, was working on the extreme consequences. We were trying to get, uh, we were trying to get justice for the children when they'd been explo exploited and abused and so on. But I was horrified and shocked to find that there was a gap on my tree. My trunk in the middle of the tree Nobody had, had, had said that they were working there. And that is those first few hours when the child has run away, when they're particularly vulnerable, when they can so easily be picked up by the wrong person and abused and exploited and so forth. And that made me think. 
I talk to other members of the consortium. You know, where do you find children like that? How do you make contact with them in those early days? And we said, well, it's, it's on the transport systems. As the children come from the rural areas into the mega cities of the world, in India, in Europe, it's a railway station. In Africa and Latin America, it's much more likely to be a bus station. And I, as a railwayman, I thought, well, you know, this is something in which I should get involved. In my railway safety work, I had a lot of dealings with the British Transport Police. And when they heard of my interests, they introduced me to two Salvation Army officers. These two women had been working for a previous 10 years, going round the big London railway stations, looking for teenagers at risk. And these two women, they picked up 3,600 children in that period. That's an average of about, oh, one a day. And they also told me a young teenager on one of our railway stations at that time, one of our London stations, had on average between 10 and 20 minutes before they'd be picked up by somebody who would exploit or abuse them. A paedophile, a drug pusher, somebody else who would harm them in some way. I couldn't cope with that. And I thought, what on earth can we do to make a difference in this area? And I started talking to some of my railway colleagues. And we decided that perhaps we could raise money and work in partnership with some of those colleagues in the, in the consortium for street children initially. And so we decided we would launch the Railway Children Charity. And uh, we, we, we actually set up a, a launch system on, the, on, on, um, where was it? on Waterloo Station Concourse under the clock. And the chairman of Rail Track, the chairman of British Rail joined me. This will be in May 1995. And we actually had 150 people gathered round and we launched the Railway Children. And so after the launch, I started working with other members of the consortium to see what could be our initial projects. And the first one we had was uh, uh, on Romanian railway station in Bucharest with young boys sleeping rough there. And then on a bus station in, in Mexico. And then finally, or well, the third one, in Ahmedabad in Gujarat where we found a local organisation found street kids on the railway station there. And so that was the beginning. It's developed many, many times since then hundreds of children, thousands of children now that we've helped since that time. And thanks to our wonderful supporters like you, we've been able to make a big difference for thousands of children in India, East Africa, and here in the UK. Thank you.